Okay, so we've really wrapped up uh, symmetric cryptography. We've talked about the basics. We've talked about the idea of the same key to encrypt that's used to decrypt. We looked at both block and stream ciphers. Uh, we talked about how blocks were more secure, but they were slow. Stream ciphers were faster, but they were less secure. So ultimately, when it comes into wrapping it up about symmetric cryptography, we've got to look at the pros and cons, why we would use symmetric and uh, why we might not. So when we talk about the downsides of symmetric cryptography, there are several things that are problems to us. Uh, the first is that there is no means of key exchange in a symmetric algorithm. And by that I mean, I'm going to encrypt with a key, you need that same key to decrypt, how do I get the key to you? And the answer is, I don't know. We've got to find some way outside of algorithms that are symmetric to do the key distribution. And when we talk about that, we call that out-of-band key exchange or key distribution. And basically what that means is it has to be done ahead of time somehow else. It could literally be as basic as me hiring a courier to hand deliver you a key. Now we know that we don't really do that in today's technical world, but there has to be some way to get the key distributed. Okay? The second problem is that symmetric algorithms are not scalable. They're not good for environments that grow to be very large because for every unique conversation, there would need to be a unique key. So, you know, for instance, if you've got multiple parties communicating, okay, two parties communicating is no big deal. You've got a key. But as I add individual, we need a key, they need a key, that fourth person, they need a key, they need a key, we need a key. Uh, and as you continue to add, and this is only five users, you can see we've got a whole lot of keys to manage. So when we talk about symmetric algorithms not being, being very scalable, that's exactly what we're talking about. It's just not scalable. It doesn't grow well. Now the third problem with symmetric cryptography is we do not get authenticity, integrity, or non-repudiation. Now, symmetric cryptography does give me privacy, and it gives me good, strong privacy as long as the key's been distributed securely. Okay, so we've got no problem getting privacy. However, if you think about this, let's say that we've used symmetric cryptography for a message. I've encrypted with the key, you've taken that same key and decrypted the message. So you and I both have the same key. Let's say that that same email contains sensitive information that was leaked to the media, perhaps. And it's encrypted with the key that you and I share. Can you cryptographically prove the message came from me? No, nope, because you and I share a key. So with symmetric cryptography, you will never get true authenticity, as in stand-up-in-court authenticity. Anytime two parties share the same key, you don't get authenticity. It's like in the back of the classroom. You and I have a key to the locker at the back of the classroom. Over the weekend, somebody's left a tuna fish sandwich in there. Now, y'all know it was me. It probably was. But as long as you have the key, I have someone else to blame. And because both parties share a key, you don't get true authenticity. Now, I can get some reasonable authenticity if you and I have a key, and it's encrypted with the key that you have, I can kind of say, well, sure, I believe that I'm communicating with the proper party. So you get kind of okay authenticity, as in I can have a reasonable assurance it came from you and nobody was impersonating you, but it's just not stand up and authenticity, which is what we want. And that's not to say you're going to be taking your employees to court. However, what we want is a good, strong reliance beyond a reasonable doubt that the origin of a message is who it purports to be from. And we've all seen these emails, you know, at least. And I've got a pretty good spam filter, but I still, once a week, will have something slide through my, my uh, spam filter purporting to be from PayPal you know, your email has been compromised. Click on this link to go reset it. And, and we know better than clicking on links and emails, hopefully. But ultimately what happens is 
I want to be sure that that message does come from PayPal before I would click on the link or open an attachment. And you just don't get that degree of authenticity with symmetric photography. Now, the next thing we don't get, we don't get integrity. Just because I encrypt a message to you with the key that you and I share, does that guarantee the message hasn't been corrupted across the wire? No. There's nothing in cryptography, I'm sorry, there's nothing in encryption that guarantees whether or not a message has been changed. Okay? Corruption happens in cryptography when you, sort of, let, me, let me say that again. Corruption happens and there's nothing about encrypting a message that prevents corruption from happening or even detects that corruption has happened. And with symmetric cryptography, we don't get that. Just because a message is encrypted with the key that you and I have, that doesn't keep packets from being dropped on the wire. So no integrity. Well, if I have no authenticity and I have no integrity, am I going to get non-repudiation? Nope. Because non-repudiation, if you'll recall, is a combination of those two security services. Non-repudiation says the sender can't dispute having sent the message nor the contents of the message. So. No authenticity, no integrity, therefore no non-repudiation. Well, if we have all these drawbacks to symmetric cryptography, why in the world would we use it? And I don't know if you can see this at the bottom of the screen, but basically what it says is symmetric cryptography is fast, fast, fast. And that's a very important characteristic, that symmetric cryptography is fast. As a matter of fact, when we say fast, you know, a question I get, is it noticeable? Absolutely. You uh, would have a speed improvement sometimes thousands of times better with a symmetric algorithm than with an asymmetric algorithm. And it has to do with the efficiency of the algorithms and how long the key would have to be in order to provide the same degree of encryption and protection. But the bottom line is, because symmetric cryptography is that fast, we want to use it. But we have to solve some of these problems. Okay? And that's where we're going to go into the next section is we're going to talk about asymmetric cryptography and how asymmetric cryptography, even though it has its own problems, solves the major problems of symmetric.